So we're in the home stretch. Summer holidays are just around the corner. School is just about over. Do you guys have your parenting plan in place? If you're lucky, you've already got a parenting plan that spans the entire year, so you know exactly what's happening for summer vacation and in any other times during the year. But it could be that you're new to this whole divorce thing, and so you're still working on what does that parenting plan look like. Or it could be that you guys have a schedule where every summer you actually have to work out what is the summer holiday going to look like this year. And that can cause a lot of tension and aggravation and anxiety because you don't know what to expect one year from the, to the next. So what do you do? So I talked about in a previous post about changing the game. So um, maybe you're dealing with somebody who's particularly difficult and you're really anxious, anticipating the conversation and how it's going to go and what kind of difficulty, difficulty they're going to charge um, they're going to give you this year around, maybe they are difficult when it comes to the travel consent because many of us want to take our kids away on a vacation during the summer holidays. And what if that's you? What if it's you who always causes the difficulty and trying to get you to sign that travel consent is always a thing? What if you were the game changer this year? What if you just signed it? What if the other parent asked you, listen, I want to go to this place. I want to take the kids on these dates. Can you please sign the travel consent? What if you just signed it without a to-do, without any commotion at all, and just signed it? Imagine the reaction from the other parent. Maybe that could change the game for you. Maybe when it's your turn to ask for either a travel consent or some other favor during the holidays, they will return the favor because you were so kind as to sign that thing right away without causing any difficulty. Maybe you could change the game. Wouldn't that be a nice treat? And what if you are anticipating some other special thing that you want for the summertime and the other parent is particularly difficult? Or again, maybe it's you who's particularly difficult. Again, changing the game. What if you just did it? It's not hurting you, it's not hurting them, and it's in the best interests of the kids. Why not just agree without a big to-do about it? Or, you know, what if you're thinking about the camps? So summer camps and what the kids normally would do when you guys were married versus what they're going to do now that you're split up. What if you could put aside your own feelings for a minute and as opposed to potentially reacting in a way that is, you know, I'm going to get you back for that thing that you weren't cooperating with me with the last time, but instead thinking through, okay, what's in the best interest of the kids? Is this a summer camp they normally go to? Would it be in their best interest if I just agreed and said, yeah, they can go to that camp on those particular dates and I'm going to share in whatever manner you normally share those kinds of expenses and we're just going to get on with it. And now the kids will be happy because they get to go to those camps. You and I are not engaging in a battle this time around and we're changing the game. We're making it easier to deal with each other. And who is really winning in this scenario? It's the kids. You guys are agreeing to allow the kids to go to the camps that they normally go to, engage in the activities that they normally would engage in without that battle back and forth, without losing your sanity and your peace of mind because you have to fight with each other each time. What if you just change the game, let it go, and remember what is best for the kids? And maybe you're the reasonable one and you're anticipating this person is going to cause me all kinds of grief. I have to get into this battle with them. I'm dreading it. I'm putting it off. I'm, I should be responding to some emails from them about the summer holidays, but I don't even want to get into it, so I'm not answering them. Well, do you have to answer them? Are there certain things in that email that don't really require response? Like maybe they're just trying to get your back up or engage you in some kind of battle back and forth because they enjoy that kind of thing. What if you just don't answer? What if you just let it go? Maybe you will keep some peace of mind and they'll start to realize that they're not going to get under your skin every single time they want to battle. Maybe that's an approach that you could use. Maybe there are some things that you could learn to change your perspective on, knowing that they always act in a certain way. They try to get under my skin in a certain way. They use certain trigger words for me that usually bother me. But this time, uh -uh, I'm not going to let it happen. I know that that's how they act. And I know that I can't change the other person, but I also know that I can change myself. I can change the way I react, the way I answer, the way I respond, 
the way I decide not to respond to certain things so that I don't have to have that fight with them this time around. Maybe you're going to change the game this year and maybe your lack of response will change the game for them and they'll realize that they can't do it to you every single time. They can't get you involved in that battle because you're getting past that hurdle. You've had enough of it and it's time to move on. You've left them for a reason. You want peace in your life and peace also means allowing that stuff to just you know, pass over you in one ear, out the other ear. I'm not going to engage in that battle anymore. At the end of the day, it's really about our children. It's about what's best for them. It's about allowing them to have the things that they're typically used to, if we can still afford them, if the schedule allows, and not get involved in this battle back and forth. So this year, I want you to try talking about the summer vacation uh, in a cooperative manner, letting go of those things that are triggers for you, letting go of those things that the other person might be saying to you that really bother you and really don't matter. Like at the end of the day, is this going to matter next year? Those words that they're using, is that just a way to get your back up? Let it go. And if you think that you can allow them to go to the camps and it's really not going to be a negative impact to you or them, let them go to the camp. And again, if you're the one that's holding off on signing that travel consent, is it really in their interest for you to do that? Or would it be better if you just sign the travel consent wish them a great time with the other parent, allow them to really enjoy themselves and hope that that other parent will return the favor when it comes time to you wanting to travel with the kids. Just a few food pieces of food for thought. Have a great day. I hope you're enjoying the sun today. Take care.